today, let's talk about the dirty little part of crypto. The nasty little thing of crypto that makes it a pain in the butt. There, we're talking about Bitcoin fees, Ethereum fees, transaction fees to move your beloved crypto across the network. Uh, for Ethereum, it was called gas fees. Uh, Bitcoin has fees as well. But lately, these uh, Bitcoin fees have soared, boom, nearly 1,000% since August. You can see on the chart right here, Big Daddy's. Look at that. It's going up. Why is that? Well, Bitcoin's getting more popular. Get ready for this Bitcoin ETFs to come. And what does that mean? More transactions on the network. Just like with Ethereum, when there's a lot of transactions, peak times on the network, your gas fees go up. Your transaction fees go up. You are paying premium. Wow. And that's what it is. Basically, higher network traffic higher fees to move your money, to move your crypto, not money, yeah, crypto, whatever. But the good thing about that, I guess, if you're, if you're a crypto miner, let me find that article. Yeah, so Bitcoin fees hit 20 month high as miner revenues match uh, that at that time when Bitcoin was at 69,000. So miners are actually doing well again. It's been a, uh, it's been a crypto miner winner for a year and a half or so since Ethereum stopped, uh, being proof of work and went to proof of fake, uh, whatever that is, you know, we know, but I'm, I don't know anybody doing, I don't know, getting rewards or whatever, staking their Ethereum. No one's ever mentioned it to me, but I should look into it. Eh. I just don't like Ethereum because they're, they do have high gas fees. So anyway, the good thing about all these fees, if you're a miner, you're going to do well with uh, getting your rewards. So mining your GPU, generating lots of heat, burning lots of electricity. And uh, yeah, is going to pay off, I guess, if you're mining uh, with ASICs and stuff like that. You can't really, I don't know if you can do GPU. Eh, mostly ASIC miners are the ones mining Bitcoin. You can't mine Ethereum anymore, but you're mining uh, all these little altcoins. And you can get paid in Bitcoin, but you got to transfer it. And that's where they get you blammo on the transaction fees. Boom. Yeah. Anyway, short and sweet. Uh, just want to let you guys highlight the fees, what you can do is you can go look at the fees. There's always data out there. Here's Y charts. This is the Bitcoin average transaction fee, the BATFA, BATFA. And right here you can see here, oh, it kind of dropped a little bit. On December 22nd, it went to 22.75. And uh, if we go, what was the peak here? Peak was 38.43. So we just go through, you can see the, 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 the values gives you an idea of what's been going on. It's been up from, oh my God, let's go back to even, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back to 473. Yeah, it's just getting more popular. Crowded and the fees are going up. Miners are doing well. So that is how you can look at the Bitcoin average transaction fee. You can also go look at the Ethereum gas tracker. I hate Ethereum with a passion. I hate the network fee. It's actually low right now. 22, they call it GUI. All these stupid Crypto ecosystem names, it just drives you nuts after all. It, it makes you not want to invest in this stuff because it's its too cute, right? It's buying a furry little animal or something. It's like, oh, <laughs> you're dealing with your money, so be careful. Problem with Ethereum, I found, I have small bits of Ethereum, coins on the Ethereum network. Not enough to move my freaking Ethereum off a Coinbase wallet. It's trapped there. They're on the Ethereum network. I'd have to drop... 40 bucks in Ethereum, move it over to that wallet, lose money there with the transaction fee just to move my crypto off of there back to an exchange like Coinbase proper to dump the crap. It's, 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 it's a loss, man. And that's, that turns a lot of normies off. And maybe that's why I'm hoping that Bitcoin ETFs by Vanguard BlackRock who own the world, you will rent everything, you will own nothing, and you'll be happy. And that's BlackRock's motto. Yeah. So if those ETFs come through, Vanguard, I think Vanguard, Fidelity, and BlackRock have it. I think that'll make it easier for the normies, for uh, for for Thurston sitting in his mansion in uh, Potomac to say, hey, Stucky at his Fidelity exchange, buy me some Bitcoin in that ETF and put a million bucks in. It's easier for them. They don't have to worry about going to Coinbase, on an account, moving the crap over to a wallet, worry about getting scammed out of their ledger wallet or one of those hardware wallets with middle uh, man-in-the-middle attacks and uh, address spoofing, all that crap. They just, boom, 
they let the exchanges, the uh, brokerage houses handle that. So that's where I'm hoping, that's my one hope to having. I don't know what effect that's gonna have on anything, but the fees are out there. All right, if you made it this far in the five minute video so far, here's the tip to get around these high fees. All right, how they work? You just gotta read, man. Google is your friend. Google is your friend. Contents, what are, what are transaction fees? Just here it is, It's I, basically what I said. Oh, you got your transaction fee calculator. How to save on Bitcoin transaction fee, action fee, action fee, action fee. Click on it. Okay, I clicked on it. All right. Where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the Bitcoin transaction fee calculator, calculator, fantastic thing, but also aren't, 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 count your own personnel situation. All right, it's always, yeah. You don't have multiple Bitcoins. I mean, if you are, you're not watching this stupid YouTube videos. But anyway, pick the right time. Here's all I can say. I did this when I was mining Ethereum. I would wait until the gas fee dropped really low. I would have this little old gas indicator up the charts, watching, watching, watching the trend, watching it dip down. And I go, blammo, transfer my Ethereum at low cost and a higher speed because that meant to me the network activity was at a low peak and uh, it paid off. It worked. It worked for the big, uh, big crypto Jimmy. Uh, hindsight, I should have always mined the Bitcoin and not worried about this Ethereum network crap. All right, pick the right time as you're comparing, uh, as you're competing with quite literally everyone in the world. The most crucial thing that determines how high fees are is timing. It's like you wouldn't intentionally go for a drive during peak hour traffic and Bitcoin is no different. Think of it that way. Uh, try and time your transactions at the least busiest times and you'll have a much better and cheaper experience. Yes, I like this point right here. Although Bitcoin is a global thing, blah, 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 all users are based out of the U.S. of America, uh, you'll usually find that the busiest times are when it's the standard business hours of 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, probably Eastern Standard Time in the USA. So one of the simplest and easiest way to save on Bitcoin transaction fees is to just not send transactions during these busy times. Bamo, there is your secret sauce pro tip. I'm out. That's all I wanted to say. Just you can, if you're doing it to your bull crap, check the gas fees on the network site. You can also check the site here for the old Bitcoiner fees. You can monitor it. There's other sites off here. Here's interactive chart. I have never looked at this in a while. Let's see. Yeah, it gives you all that good stuff. Look at that. Goodies. Data out the bunghole. All for you to analyze, consume, and become a crypto wizard. All right. I'm out of here. I'm taking a dog out for a walk.